Welcome to the webinar recording for Get Organised for Study. This topic will be useful for ACAP, NCPS and HSA students. This includes students studying diploma courses at ACAP. This is a recording of the material we cover in the live webinar of this topic. You can watch the video straight through or you can pause at any time to take notes or do the activities. You can also access the slides for this webinar from the SLS website. This video will discuss some strategies for organising your time to maximise your potential for academic success. We'll look at different types of planners and some strategies to help avoid procrastination. There will also be links to further resources and support you might need throughout the term. Let's get started. In order to plan your time well, it's a good idea to be aware about what helps you use your time well, what might waste your time, and how you can learn best. Understanding these things can help you study more effectively and efficiently. Take a moment to think about how you currently manage your time. Do you use your time well? How do you plan and manage your time? What ways might you improve on that? Also think about how you might waste your time. What are the things that contribute to you not being able to get started on a task? For example, are there certain times of the day when it's harder to get motivated to study? Are you more productive when you study at home or somewhere else, like the library? What in particular distracts you from getting on with your work? Now that you've identified your current use of time, let's look at some strategies to help you get even more organised for study. One of the best strategies for using your time effectively is to use planners. There are different types of planners to help manage your time, such as assignment planners, term planners, weekly planners, and daily planners. You can download these planners from the Student Learning Support website, but you may also use something of your own. Let's look at an assignment summary planner. This is where you transfer all of the essential assignment information from your unit outlines onto the one summary sheet. At a glance, you can see when each assignment is due, the length and the weighting. It's a good idea to create this as early as possible in the term to create an awareness of all your assessment tasks so none are overlooked. It helps put all the information in one place and keeps you mindful of the preparation needed for your assignments as you study. You will also find a term planner beneficial. This is good for noting down when assignments are due as well as marking when you need to start doing certain things during the term. It's also a good way to identify the periods of the term that are busy. For example, there are often several assignments due around week 11 and 12. This planner helps plan for those busy periods. A term planner is also useful for adding personal commitments, such as the school holidays. You will notice that on this ACAP term planner, there is a break in the middle of the term and that the term runs for 12 weeks. However, the term planner can be slightly different for each school so make sure you check the Student Learning Support website for the most recent planner. It can also be very useful to analyse how you use your time over a week. Using a weekly planner is an effective way to identify any blocks of time that could be used for study. It's also important to schedule some free time. However, remember to reduce some of your other activities, such as work and socialising, to make time available for study. It won't always work out the way you want, but try and be realistic. The final type of planner that you may find useful is a daily planner. A daily planner helps with prioritising your tasks and gives direction when you sit down to study or write. Put your most important tasks first and start others when your top tasks are complete. Also make sure the tasks are clear and specific. For example, instead of writing do reading for an assignment, this student has written read Egan chapter 6. So it's very specific. It's also important to think about what you can realistically achieve in certain time slots. For example, if you have only a short time slot for study, check off smaller tasks such as reviewing class notes, completing short readings, or jotting down ideas and essay plans. For medium time slots of a couple of hours, tackle some bigger tasks such as searching for sources, reading sources and taking notes, writing sections of an assignment such as the introduction or the conclusion, or proofreading assignments. 
for long time slots where you have a block of at least a few hours, do extensive reading where you compare and synthesize information from sources, write your assignments, and carefully review and revise your assignments. Using time slots well is key to being productive and efficient. Now let's have a look at procrastination and why we procrastinate. Take a moment to think of the reasons you might put things off or why you may have trouble getting started on a task. Do any of these resonate with you? Here we've given some common reasons for procrastination. Unrealistic expectations and perfectionism, fear and anxiety about the task, difficulty concentrating and poor time management. If you can identify with any of these, we've shown solutions which may help you overcome these. Finally, we've put together our 10 best tips to maximise your road to academic success. You might like to press pause now and read through them. For more information on time management, check out the time management section on the SLS website under the Studying Successfully section. You can also download the planners shown in this video from that section of the site. Get in touch with us at Student Learning Support if you have any questions or need further help with getting organised for study. Good luck with your studies this term.